tragedies are commonplace All kinds of diseases, people are slipping away The economy's down, folk can't get enough pay But as for me, all I can say is Thank you Lord for all you've done for me Yeah, yeah, yeah Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Ah, ain't it good to be in the house of the Lord one more time? In your home, wherever you may be. In Jesus' name, it's good to be on top of the soil today. I give glory to God today who's ahead of my life. I give him all the honor and the praise. And I thank him for waking me up this morning, clothing my right mind. And I have the activities of my limbs. But I pray for those who are going through right now. I bring you greetings from the wonderful, magnificent church, UPHC, here in James City, where my pastor is Bishop Wallace E. Grimes, and our first lady is Jennifer Grimes. We thank God for them. Right now, we want to have some prayer because prayer changes things. And we need to pray when we open our eyes up in the morning. We need to give God the praise because he didn't have to wake us up, but he did. And I thank God for waking me this morning. Wherever you may be, my name is Evangelist Dorothy Sight Smith McCarter. I give all those names because a lot of people don't know me by one name. But anyway, one thing all you need to know is that I'm a child of the king. Let us pray. Dear Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you for my being able to see and to hear this morning. Uh, I'm blessed because you are a forgiving God. And I understand that, God, you are in control. You have done so much for us. And you keep on blessing us over and over again. No matter what's going on around us, you keep on blessing us anyway. Please keep us safe, God, from all danger. God, I pray that you will move on somebody's life this morning. That the words you have given me to give to your people, that somebody will reap something from what you have put inside of me to offer to them. God, we give you glory, we give you honor as we turn our attention to passing out your word to your people. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen, amen. Wherever you at, give God a praise. Give God a praise, for he's worthy. Well, I come to you this morning with a familiar passage that everybody knows but you know, sometimes we got to preach the same thing over and over for some people to get the message. So those of you who are watching on, who have your sword in front of you, and if not, I'll give you a few seconds to find it. All right, let's go. Well, I'm going to be coming from Genesis, the 12th chapter. And I'm going to be reading verses 1 to 3. Uh, and it reads as thus. The Lord had said to Abraham, Leave. Remember that word. Leave your country, your people, and your father's house. And go to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. And uh, I will bless you. I will make your name great. And you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. And whosoever curse you, I will curse. And all people on earth will be blessed through you. I have read Genesis 
12th chapter 1 through 3. And my topic from that, you know we like topics and, and subs, but my topic from that is, I must complete my journey. I'm on a journey, and I must go by myself. <clears throat> now, on this journey, we may have to take some pit stops. We might get a flat tire here and there. We might go through a few storms or a few thunderstorms, but we, as Women and men of God, we are on a journey, or shall I say a mission. But on this journey, we must go by what? Ourself. Now, God told Abraham to leave. That's the word. He said leave. In other words, he's got to leave all this stuff behind. Uh, this journey is an act, journey is a word, it's an act of traveling. Going somewhere or a distant travel. Now from Genesis to Revelation, scripture is full of people on the move. Full of different ones traveling. But this morning, this afternoon, wherever you may be, or whatever time of day it is, wherever you are that's listening in, uh, I'm going to be trying to give you a word from God about Abraham. Because that's in Genesis, the beginning of the book, where the traveling started. Now, Scripture is full of people. Now, this journey is only for me. I'm talking about me now. Because a lot of us are on a journey, but because of this pandemic, Corona, Corolla, whatever her name is, we have forgot about to continue to travel. We have stopped traveling on the journey that God has given us or on the mission that God has given us because we worrying about what's going on with Corona, Corolla, whatever her name is. I'm going to get her name right, but you know who I'm talking about. We have to leave. That's what we don't want to do. We have to leave some folks behind. And that includes family. My, 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 my. Family, church, whoever. We have to leave some folks behind to complete the journey that God has us on. Now, God has us all on the journey. It may not be the same journey. You may not be going in the same direction, but when it all comes together, it's for God. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Not realizing that your family member may be the one holding you back. Ha! Huh. God is saying, go by yourself. I'm on a journey, y'all, and I must go by myself. I can't take nobody with me. See, when God sends you somewhere, sometimes you got to go by yourself. Now, sometimes he'll send somebody with you. But we always take the world, for instance. We go on a job. To put in for a job, we got to take our friends with us. No, sometimes you got to go by yourself. You know why? Because that friend wind up getting the job that you took with you when the job was for you, but because you took your friend with you, the friend got the job because you were hard here. God said, go by yourself. You cannot be blessed for being disobedient. Now, not realizing that your family, going back to your family, your family can be holding you back. God is saying, go by yourself. We always want to drag somebody with us. There's only. Now, God send you out. He only give you one ration. <laughs> now, he send you out by yourself. When he only gives you enough of one ration, that means just for you. God spoke to Abraham and told him to leave everything. Leave your people. That's hard. You don't want to leave your family behind. I mean, come on now. 
but your father household and go. But when Abraham left, he took somebody with him. Uh, you see what I'm saying? He took somebody with him. And he took his nephew Lot and his family. But God told him to leave. But no, okay. But there's some consequences for being disobedient. When they reached Canaan, the herdsman, here's the first thing. Lot herdsman and Abraham herdsman, they got the feuding. <laughs> They got the few and they couldn't get along. They began to quarrel with each other. They couldn't get along on a journey. And I must go by myself. God said, go by yourself. He didn't say take nobody with you. Because if he wants you to take somebody with you, he will let you know. God knew that family would be a hindrance. And that is why he told Abraham, he already knew what trouble Lot was going to cause. He already knew what was going on or get himself into. They were quarreling over the best pastures. Hmm? And Abraham told Lot, soon it will look like a two-tribe war. So Abraham suggested that they settle in a different place. But Abraham was still generous. Okay, choose. What, you, you choose where you want to go. <laughs> Lot caused Abraham a lot of headaches before it was all over. And if he had just went by himself, like God told him, he wouldn't have got in the mess he was in. See, when you disobey God and do what you want to do, you're going to be in a mess. Now, if he said go by yourself, that's what he meant. But it's okay to look after family members, not saying we still got to love them. We still got to look out them. Families got to come together because this is what the enemy is trying to do. He's trying to destroy, break up families. He starts with the head. But that's his job. But you know what? He is passing out applications, and we are signing them. We don't have to sign Satan's applications to cause confusion over here, confusion over there. All we got to do is be obedient to the word of God. But if they are going to hinder you, from getting your blessing of serving God, you got to turn. You got to turn them loose. But I didn't say don't love them. Don't be there for them. You got to turn them loose, be it families. Now, if you got to turn family loose, them so-called friends that you're running with, that you're hanging with, you should have been let them go. Huh? So therefore, we got to be obedient, let them go and pray for them. Don't get caught up in their traps. And the devil, the enemy is using families to get us caught up in their traps. And when you get in a trap, it's like when you set a trap in the woods for an animal to, to, to get into. It clamps down on you. And when it clamps down on you, it holds you tight. But there's nothing too hard for God. If you get caught in a trap while on this journey, one thing about it, God can loose the trap. Example of some people in the Bible who was also on a journey, not just Abraham, because the Bible is full of people on different journeys. Like I said in the beginning, your journey may not be going the same way, but it's still in God's way, but in a different direction. 
Paul, for an example, was on a journey. He was a missionary. He was on, a, he was an apostle to the Gentiles and the author of 13 New Testament letters. He was on a journey. Paul called by Barnabas to help the ministry in Antioch. And over the next 15 years, Paul was on a journey. He traveled all over various places. Uh, he had companions uh, preaching the gospel. I'm on a journey, y'all, and I must go by myself. I can't take my mama with me. God rest her soul. I can't take my daddy with me. God rest his soul. I can't take my brother nor my sisters. I'm on a journey and I must go by myself. He traveled around all over everywhere. He was on a journey for the Lord. When you're on a journey for God, even though along the way you may have a few ups, a few downs, and a storm. But one thing about it, you can make it through the storm. First, Paul in the synagogue, and then among the Gentiles. He paused in Corinth and Ephesus because there were great trading centers. And God knew about Jesus could be easily spread it. The good news about Jesus could be easily spread. Mm -hmm. And 10 years, Paul said he had fully preached the gospel of Christ. Paul was on a journey, and I'm on a journey, and I must go by myself. But he had to endure. See, you got to endure on this road. You got to endure some hard things. You got to endure some trials, some tribulation, but you got to keep on walking. You got to keep your head up. You got to trust and have faith in God. Uh, I'm going to walk through this pandemic. I'm going to walk through Corona, Corolla. Uh, I'm going to keep looking to the hills. Uh, since whence cometh my help? Because uh, all my help uh, comes uh, from the Lord. <laughs> I tell you, church, it's time to be obedient. Uh, it's time to be about your father's business. Uh, I'm on a journey, and I must go by myself. Uh, can't take nobody with me. Because <laughs> God said, go by yourself. Uh, if you need somebody, I'll dispatch an angel to go with you. He said, because I told you, I'm already there. I'm with you. Uh, I will never leave you uh, nor forsake you. Uh, I'm on a journey and I must go by myself. Uh, can't nobody go with me. But he had to endure two years in prison without a trial. <laughs> See, sometimes we have to endure, as I said, hardness as a good soldier along the way. There are times uh, that God may tell us uh, to take someone. Uh, I'm on a journey and I must go by myself. Uh, there's only enough rations for me. <laughs> I'm sorry, honey. You might be my best friend. I'm sorry, mama. I'm sorry, daddy. I'm sorry, sister and brother. You can't go on this journey. Bye. I gotta go. Bye. I gotta go. Bye. By myself. I'm on a journey, y'all. And it's time to wake up and be about your father's business. The second person in the Bible, the second ones that was on a journey. And we all talk about them all the time. Them old hard-head Israelites. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They was on a journey. They were set free. They were on their way to the promised land. 
But because of their hard-headed, stiff-necked self, they did not complete their journey. See, if you're hard-headed and you don't listen to God, you won't be able to complete your journey. And if you don't complete your journey, you won't get your blessing. See, your blessing is in completing your journey. Church, there's a journey that I must take. I don't know about you, but I must go by myself. Sister, brother, best friend, husband, honey, bunnies, or whomever, I must go by myself. Abraham went on his journey from the south even to Bethel. The Israelites moved with the clouds. And when the clouds stop, they stop and pitch the tent. And at the command of the Lord, the children of Israel journeyed. And at the command of the Lord, they pitched their tents. At the command of God to take a journey, he's going to prepare the way for you. You don't have to worry about what's ahead. Even trying to get to what God's telling you to go, you're going to have some pitfalls. You're going to have some stumbling blocks, uh, but God will let you walk around, walk around the stumbling blocks. And, and on this Christian journey, there will be some heartaches, there will be some pain, sunshine, and some rain, but we must journey on. We have to know when to go, and we have to know when not to go, when to start and when not to go. Some of us don't obey either command. Church is an uphill journey, but we must keep on climbing. As the late James Cleveland would say, I don't feel no way tired. I've come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me I said, nobody told me that the road would be easy. This is not an easy walk, but God is on the road with us. I don't believe that God will bring you this far. I don't believe that God will send you on a journey that you're not fully dressed for. I don't believe that God will let you go sometimes by yourself when he know you need help to go with you. I'm on a journey and I must go by myself. I can't take nobody, nobody with me. I got on my traveling shoes. I have got to step out of the box and start moving. I have to have on my whole armor. I got to be fully dressed. I can't step out half dressed. See, the road may get rough and the going may get tough, but I must keep on climbing because can't nobody slow me down. I got to keep on walking. I got to keep on walking straight ahead. I got to keep my eyes on the prize. I can't look back. I don't care what they think about me. I don't care what they say. I'm on a journey and I must go by myself. I can't take nobody with me. I'm looking for a blessing from the Lord. I want you, no, don't look at me for what I used to be. See me for who I am now. I'm not a used to be. I'm a right now child and woman of God. If you're on a journey, you better complete your journey. See, the way may not seem easy. Oh yes, he did not say it would be. But when it gets tough and I have to do it by myself, God said, no, you are with me and I am with you. Oh, glory to God. All I have to do is put my trust in thee. 
and keep on traveling. In Mark 6, 7 through 8, and he called unto him the twelve and began to send them forth two by two and gave them power over unclean spirits. Mm-hmm. And commanded them that they should take nothing. Huh? Here we go again. They should take nothing for this journey. Say a save a staff only. No scrip, no bread, no money in their pockets, no money in their purse. Take nothing with you. Why? Because he's going to supply everything that you need. Scrip is a knapsack of some sort. A purse is the belt. And Jesus' command makes his disciple totally independent on God. No bread, no bags, even a corn, a second coat to ward off the night chills at night. On a journey, and I must go by myself. I was made for a mission, y'all. What about you? Do you know what your mission is? Are you on your journey? Are you sitting back waiting for a blessing, but yet you won't journey on? I'm on a journey, y'all, and I must go by myself. First of all, do we know what the word mission means? Do you know, I told you what journey means. Well, it means sin. God is sending us out on a journey. A journey is when you're going somewhere. And I say to you today, if you are not on your journey that God has told you, I advise you to get on your journey. Stay on your journey. Stay on the highway to heaven. Keep your mind stayed on God. And even though it hurts sometimes when you have to leave your family behind, it hurts when you can't take them with you. But this is a journey walk. This is a journey walk. And I don't know about you. But I'm going to keep on walking up the king's highway. You can't stop me and you can't block me. And I say to you today, remember that God loves you. And we're on a journey, y'all, and we must complete the journey. For those of you who are looking on, those of you who are listening, and even the spirit of the Lord for the ones who are not even listening, that he may touch their minds and their hearts on this word today. Bow your head with me and let the Lord know I'm ready to complete my journey. Father, in the name of Jesus, as once again we've come to the end of another service. And Lord, we want to say we thank you for the journey. But, oh God, we thank you that on this journey, when we meet some highways, byways, some storms, that God, you're right there. That we can go around the obstacles, the roadblocks. Oh God, we ask you to bless right now. We ask you to touch, oh God. God, we ask you to keep our minds stayed on you. Let us complete our journey. And Lord, let us complete it. If you say go by ourselves, we must go by ourselves. Lord, I thank you and I praise you for being able to come before your people in the name of Jesus. God, we give you glory and we give you honor. In Jesus' name we pray. May God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. Know that God loves you, and I do too. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you.
UPHC Church Family and Friends. Your tithes and offerings and also donations can be sent by way of Cash App, PayPal, Payment Methods, or in the description. Join us for relevant biblical studies with informative topics via lectures and transforming teachings streaming every Wednesday night, 7 p.m. Have a blessed week. Folks without homes, living out in the streets. And the drug habits, some say, they just can't beat. Muggers and robbers, no place seems to be safe. But you've been my protection every step of the way. I want to say, thank you, Lord. Yeah, yeah, yes, it could have been me outdoors. With no food and no clothes. As viewed here today, McAfee Tech is here for all your technical needs. Please contact us at 252-349-0180.